same time that you're calling on God? Yeah. Yet he's on time. He answers each and every last one of those prayers. He answers them right on time. Yes. Right. Come when you want it. Always. Right on time. I wonder how many of us sit, take the time to think about how messed up it would have been if he'd have showed up when we wanted him to show up. Versus showing up when he knew that it was the right time. On time, God. His time is not our time. Ways are not our ways. Thank God for it. Thoughts are not our thoughts. This morning I invite your attention in your Bibles to the Gospel according to John. John. John chapter 1. And we're going to be reading, started at the 14th verse of the Gospel according to John. Those of you who have your Bibles and wish to turn along with me, please invite you to do so. John, John chapter 14, chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 1, John chapter 1. And we can start in at the 14th verse. Amen. 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 And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace, or grace. For the law was given by Moses, Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared it. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Uh, from that passage of scripture this morning, uh, we want to focus our attention on the 17th verse which I read again for the hearing. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth by Jesus Christ. Using for a subject this morning, God's grace. God's grace. Most holy and all wise God, Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask that you, Lord, honor our steps this morning that we will bind us together on one accord that you will create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable. And I say, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. As pastors, Preaching is not an option. Uh, every Sunday morning I have to get up here and I have to preach whether I want to or not. And uh, you don't want to, I not want to do it in a slavish spirit and yet I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I'm a, I'm a slave, and I'm a slave by choice. Amen. Slave by choice. Then my body, a living sacrifice. So uh, this morning, uh, with my wife down in Louisiana, I, I feel half full, kind of. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wrestled a little bit with 
getting energized, resting a little bit with, with uh, uh, feeling like you're preaching. I don't feel like preaching. <laughs> That's all the way I could put it. I don't feel like preaching this morning. But nonetheless, I thank God for the opportunity. Yes. 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 What an humbling experience. Mm -hmm. What an humbling experience. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not ashamed of expressing my inadequacies and my total dependency upon the Lord in certain situations. And uh, that, is, that is why uh, he gives us the privilege of prayer. And every prayer, every prayer shall find its answer. So we call on him this morning. Yeah. Pray with me. Pray for me. That the Lord will strengthen me in bringing forth the message to you this morning about God's grace. Uh, wonderful subject for where I'm feeling this morning. For his grace is sufficient. Yes. Yes. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, uh, when I'm weak, then he is strong in me. So I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm leaning on that passage, Paul, this morning, because I'm weak this morning. And I, I'm holding to that truth that he is strong in in me this morning. I'm putting all of my trust in you, Lord. I'm leaning and dependent on your grace, God's grace. Well, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. We've received grace and truth, John said in this passage, that Christ was full of grace and truth and that uh, that grace and truth was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now here we say that by him grace and truth uh, came to us, came to us in the form of uh, that little baby on what we call Christmas morning. Born in the manger, this day in the city of David, a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. From Christ we receive grace. This is uh, uh, that John, John the Baptist, who delighted in it. He speaks of it over and over again. Two things he further observes in this verse concerning this grace. Grace we know to be uh, the unmerited, the undeserved favor of God. And without grace, uh, none of us could be. Without grace, uh, none of us would have any hope for all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's preference above the law of Moses. Uh, certainly we prefer grace to the law of Moses for the law was given by Moses and it was a, a glorious discovery uh, both of God's will concerning man and his good will to man. So the law was a wonderful thing. It was the way that God revealed himself to us until the law was given. Uh, we uh, could claim that uh, we were without uh, sin because we didn't know what sin was. Uh, where there is no law, there is no sin. And so uh, God had left man to himself to uh, see just how he would thrive in this world. Uh, let you remember how uh, Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, and he was created in holiness, and he was created in righteousness. He was created totally without sin. And it wasn't until uh, Adam and Eve decided that they were going to be disobedient to God 
that they lost that holy state, and as it goes, they didn't just lose their holy state, but their rational image that uh, they were created in the image of God was greatly impaired. Um, it was impaired to the extent that we call wrong right and we call right wrong. And so, uh, once sin in an end, Scripture says that God had to put them out of the tree, out of the Garden of Eden, wherein was the fruit of the tree of life, or the tree of life which bore fruit for the living. Why did He have to put them out of the Garden of Eden? Because if He doesn't put them out of the Garden of Eden, and if they're in their sinful state, eat from that tree of life. They will live forever in a sinful state. Mm -hmm. well. So God had to expel them from uh, the Garden of Eden so that they would not uh, perpetually live in a sinful state. And as God had declared uh, that in the day that they eat of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that mm -hmm. they shall surely Die. Yes. And so here they are. Uh, they had everything they wanted. Mm -hmm. Had everything they wanted. Uh, there was nothing uh, that their hearts could desire that uh, was not not available to them. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to work. Well, man, man, man. That, isn't that a feeling? Uh, yeah. Yeah. They didn't have to cook, sisters. They didn't have to clean. They didn't have to plow no fields. They didn't have to plant no corn and tomatoes and potatoes. They didn't have to pick no cotton. All they had to do was just eat of the trees and the fruits that God uh, provided so graciously for them and each and every day. They fellowship with God and they walk with God and they talk with God. There were no bugs to worry about. There were no snakes to worry about because uh, even the snakes and the bugs and the lions and the bears, they got along with one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then sin in an end. Still, there was no law, though, even though sin has entered in. It in. So, uh, uh, what is sin as far as we are concerned and and so God left us to ourselves so that uh, uh, we could see for ourselves just what sin is we are now eaten from the true from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil yeah. what you gonna choose you're gonna choose good are you going to choose evil? Well, well, you had a holy state, but well, now you've got a sinful state. Now you have decided that you're going to uh, listen to Satan and, and Satan telling you that, that uh, uh, the only reason that God didn't want you to eat of that tree is because he didn't want you to be like him, which was Satan's uh, ambition uh, from the very beginning. He wasn't good enough that he was one of God's uh, most powerful, most beautiful, and uh, uh, most uh, most everything angel. He wanted to be like God. And so sin in and in, and, and uh, uh, at this point God's, uh, you, you, you've now separated yourself from God. He's now put you out of the Garden of Eden. You now decided that you know better than God and you can do it yourself. And as we were talking about in our Sunday school lesson this morning, what happens when we as children decide we don't need God, uh, mom and dad is helping anymore. We can do it ourselves. Give me my inheritance. I'm going on. And, 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 and I'm going to uh, I, I know how this life thing works. Just give me my money and I can work it out. And I, I don't I don't want to live no dull life like mom and daddy. I, 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 I don't want to uh, 
I don't want to be no old folk. You're like, Mama, give me my money. And I'm, I'm going to live it up. I'm going to show you how to do this thing, Mama. And that is so much fun to be had in this world. And just like with the prodigal son, he soon found out the cost of fun. He soon found out what happens when your money runs out. And so it was with us when uh, God put us out of the uh, uh, Garden of Eden and we had to fit for you. You know better than I do. Uh, you, you don't want to obey my word, so go ahead and do it yourself. And uh, Scripture tells us that as... Uh, we began to do our own thing uh, that uh, all of a sudden uh, we we were committing murders mm -hmm. Cain slew his brother Abel and yet he wasn't put in jail because there was no law that says that uh, murdering uh, uh, was a crime uh, and and, and uh, from there, uh, we uh, did all manner of sinful things. We decided that we were going to, uh, for example, build a tower to heaven, Scripture says. And, and uh, they started to round up their material and they started building. Uh, I, I, want, I wonder just how far they got with that Deacon White and building that tower to heaven. <laughs> and how far they would have gotten uh, if God hadn't stopped them. But it lets us know that they must have been some pretty smart people in those days mm -hmm. that they could even come up uh, with, the, with the wherewithal to even attempt to build a tower to heaven. Uh, we, we know even today that with the great pyramids and some of those great structures that we have in Egypt that Technology cannot even explain until this day how it was that uh, with the wherewithal and what they had available to them in those days that they could build these great structures that was so uh, mind-bogglingly uh, correct. But uh, uh, I'm persuaded that uh, we, still, we still were kind of smart, but we same time we were using that smart for the wrong reason. Instead of uh, serving God, we were using that smartness that we had about it to do our own thing. And 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 and, and so as God left us to ourselves, uh, uh, okay, well, you don't need me. You don't need me to tell you what to do. You got it all figured out. But God says that we became so exceedingly sinful that it repented God, uh, that God was sorry that he ever made yeah. man. He was so sorry that he ever made man uh, that uh, he concluded that he needed to destroy mm -hmm. all of this world and start all over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that, that is not quite correct. He didn't destroy all of this world. He destroyed everybody except Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. And uh, uh, he, he would have saved even more than that if they had repented of their sin. For God now realized that they have become exceedingly sinful. And I need to step in and, and let them know the difference between wrong and right. Uh, uh, what <coughs> sin truly, what murder is, what 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 robbery is, what lying is, what adultery is. I need to let them know that it's wrong. Even though in their spirits they know the difference yeah. between good and evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 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 God God didn't just it repented him that he had made man, and, and, and what, what, he, what, what he did was he says, Noah, he found one righteous man. He said, Noah, I want you to preach to the world. How would you like to, how you, how you like being the only preacher in the world? Yeah, you, you, you got a pretty big congregation, don't you? And, and, and so here Noah was the only preacher 
in the world preaching uh, that God is not satisfied. He's not pleased with the lay that you're living. And if you don't change your world ways, he's going to destroy the world and, and, and destroy you with it. And Scripture says that Noah preached this message for 120 years. 120 years Noah preached to the world that if you don't change your ways, that God is going to destroy the world and you with it. And uh, it, it got to the point that uh, God was moving forward with his plan to destroy the world and he instructed Noah to build an ark. Mm -hmm. Build an ark on dry land. Uh, what most of us don't realize that when God uh, uh, instructed Noah to build an ark on dry land is that, uh, 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 that there, had, there was no rain upon the earth. It didn't rain in those days. It didn't rain because there was a mist that surrounded the earth that kept the earth in, in, in a beautiful uh, green and thriving environment. Uh, and, and it had the mist provided all the, 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 the water that the earth needed. It provided all the moisture that the earth needed. And it protected man from the direct rays of the sun. And it was one of the reasons why people lived longer in those days. They had no direct exposure to the sun. And, and uh, there was no such thing as rain. And so when, 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 when God uh, told them, uh, Noah to tell them that it was going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, uh, they laughed at it. What is rain? And Noah built the ark. Scripture said, Noah built the ark on dry land. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> can, 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 can you imagine uh, uh, building an ark on, on say, uh, in Redskin Stadium? Uh -huh. <laughs> that's equivalent of what Noah was doing. He was building an ark. Middle of Redskin Stadium. Middle of dry land. <laughs> no. Have you lost your mind? Uh, but but uh, uh, my friend Dr. Fowler used to teach us in the seminary, says that Noah's ark floated because he followed instructions. <coughs> and our ark will sink if we don't follow instructions. And so he built the ark on dry land and preached for 120 years as he was building this ark. And in 120 years, only could persuade his three sons and their wives mm -hmm. that the rain was coming. That it was going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. And, and, and so, can you imagine what a sinful world that was? That here the preacher is pouring his heart out every Sunday, pouring his heart out, not necessarily just every Sunday, he might have been preaching every day. I, I can sympathize a little with with with, with Noah, and, and and so he 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 finally got to the point that that uh, God said, "Okay, Noah, go into the ark, build, gather together all the animals two by two, and uh, the other instruction that He gave for uh, perpetuating the world after the flood." And then after he got inside the ark, he said, now close the door. Well, well, actually, the scripture said he didn't even tell them to close the door. The scripture said, Lord, close the door. Amen. And the door was shut. Amen. And when the door was shut, uh, the rain began to fall. Yes. All, uh, I can imagine uh, how the people felt when... Now something that they had never experienced before. Water falling down from the skies. Scripture says the fountains of the deep were opened up. And as the rain began to fall. And as the fountains of the deep were, began to open up. And as the water began to rise. All of a sudden Noah's ark 
was no longer on dry land. Uh, even though it was in Redskins Stadium, uh, the stadium was now beginning to fill up. And even though the stadium had the rim above it, the water rose so much that it didn't matter. And, and so uh, God had to destroy this world and start all over again because uh, they claimed that they didn't know what sin was. It had become so exceedingly sinful. And my point being in all of that is that now God says, now I'm going to tell you what sin is. He starts out by reminding them, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other God before me. Uh, thou shalt not make unto me any uh, graven images of the things in heaven and of the things on earth and of the things beneath the earth, the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Yes. That's the first thing he told him. <laughs> Don't you give my glory to anyone but me. Uh, he told him to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. He told him to honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long upon the earth. Uh, he, he, he told them, uh, thou shalt not lie, and thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. And now that the law is in it, you got no more excuse. Uh, you can now claim, oh, you never told me that. I, I did that because you never told me anything different. Uh, in our Sunday school lesson this morning, uh, we, 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 we were saying that uh, uh, we tell our children to stop doing something, but we don't tell them why to stop doing it. Well, I guess they, 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 they used that excuse even back in those days. And now, now, now God said, I'm going to put it in writing. Uh, can you imagine being Moses and going up on Mount Sinai to receive God's commandments to us? Uh, telling us what wrong is and, and having uh, those instructions written with the finger of God. There, uh, God commanded the people, uh, thou shalt not do this, thou shalt not do that. But this was the law of Moses that said, now if you do these things, uh -huh. if you do all the things that I command you to do, then you shall live. Yes. And you shall not die. But then, uh, they soon began to realize, like the Apostle Paul did, we and I would do good. All right, now. Evil is always present. Uh, that, that the good I wanted to do, I did not. But the wrong that I desired not to do, I found myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the death of this body? For the law says the soul that sinneth shall die. Yeah. Yeah. And so the law, instead of being my friend, became my enemy. Because yeah. yeah. every time I did something wrong, the law said the soul that sinneth shall yeah. die. And you have sinned and uh, the law did not make any exception. He didn't say the law that the soul that sin shall die except those who commit the little white crimes. Uh, he didn't say uh, uh, if, if you just have a little taste every now and then that God is going to keep you out of heaven. It didn't say if you just tell a little white lie that the, the law said the soul that sin shall die. If you break any portions of the law, you break the whole law. The law is like a window pane. And, and, and that window pane, if you break any part of that window pane, right, right, right. you break the whole window pane. Yes. And so, uh, the law of Moses uh, was given to us that we might know the difference between wrong and right. And if you do right, and the law said you can enter into heaven and you can be redeemed from your sins. But the law of, uh, 
the, the word of God taught us that all had broken the law of Moses. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was none righteous. All had sinned and had come short of the glory of God. We were all on our way to hell. And enjoy it. <laughs> and, 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 and then we, we, we even though we were on our way to hell, God even then, even in the law of Moses had some 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 types of grace that he yes. he shared with yes. us. Uh, for he says, uh, if you will make a a, a sin offering for your sins. If, if the priest will go into the holy of holies and sprinkle some blood for uh, without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins and so they were killing animals and, and making sacrifices to God as God had commanded them in the law. But even though the law couldn't save them God was giving them a, a, a type of of the grace that he had in store for them. Amen. That brings me uh, to my second point in its connection with truth. Uh, 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 truth and uh, grace and truth. In the gospel we have the discovery of the greatest truth to be embraced by the understanding as well as the richest grace to be embraced by the will and the affections. It is a faithful saint and worthy of all acceptations. That is, it is grace and truth. The offers of grace are sincere and what we may venture our souls upon. The offers of grace and truth are made in earnest by God, for it is grace and truth. And, and truth cannot be compromised. It is grace and truth uh, with reference to the law that was given by Moses. Or it is the performance of all the Old Testament promises. In the Old Testament, we often find mercy and truth put together. God saying his mercy endureth forever. Yes. And uh, he changes not. Uh, mercy according to his promise. He, 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 he said, uh, Israel, if you will obey me, uh, that I will bless you. If you keep the law, uh, I will bless you. Uh, but if you disobey me, then there are consequences. So here, grace and truth. To know grace according to God's promise. It is the substance of all the Old Testament types and shadows. Grace is something uh, of grace that was both in the ordinances that were instituted for Israel and the providences that occurred concerning Israel. But they were only shadows of good things to come make the sacrifices, sprinkle the blood, and the scapegoat that uh, takes out our sins and uh, go off into uh, the woods with them, even of the grace that is to be brought to us by the revelation of Jesus Christ. He is the true Paschal Lamb. He is the true scapegoat. He is the true manna from heaven. They had grace, they had grace in types and shadows. They had grace in a picture. Uh, but we, today, we have grace in the person of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And grace for grace. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why is that grace for grace, uh, Pastor? Because no one can say that we deserve God giving His only begotten Son to die for our sin. What in the world can we offer as a reasonable explanation why we should think that God should do this for us? He gave His only 
only begotten son. God, only begotten son, who was God, who was with him before the beginning of the world. And that's why John the Baptist said, uh, uh, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Uh, uh, I tell you that there's one who comes after me. Yeah. And John puts it this way. He says his shoelaces. I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoelaces. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No. I thought about that thing I said. But when you untie somebody's shoelaces, you try to help them. So that they can make it easy to take their shoes off. John said, I'm not even worthy yes. to help him take his shoes off. How can we say that we are worthy yes. for him to leave his throne in glory? Yes. He could have destroyed the whole world. He could have sent 10,000 angels and destroyed the world and start all over again. Yes. Did we not say in the beginning uh, uh, what the word was with God and the word was God and that he made everything and there was not anything made uh, that was not made by him and if he made it, he can unmake it, can he? Yes. Uh, we call ourselves making certain things, and and, and when they don't, you know, they don't, they don't work out, when we can't use them anymore, we just get rid of them. <laughs> Start all over again. And so why can't you understand that God uh, didn't have to do what He did? He could have just got rid of. <laughs> Start all over again. But He so loved us. Yeah. So you ask yourself the question, why did he love me? That's why we have to embrace and accept that fact that he loved us. He loved us even when we did not love him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. It was not a provisional death. It was a, a, a death out of love and grace and mercy. The unmerited, the undeserved, the un, uh, 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 this undeserved favor of God that there's nothing that any of us can do to ever say that we deserve what God did for us. And if he so loved us, how could we? Not love him back. If he so loved us, how could we? Once we've been redeemed and saved in the blood of God, how could we not walk the way that we ought to walk? Yeah. If he came and died for our sins, and we know that he died for our sins, and we know that we didn't deserve his love, how could we not live a Christian life yeah. that is acceptable? In the sight of God, how is it we can say that we love Jesus and he died for our sins but kill, keep going on doing the things that we normally do? Something wrong with that. Yes, yes, yes. And in spite of his love, yes. and in spite of our wrongdoing, and in spite of our disobedience, and in spite of the fact that we've been washed in the blood, right. our sins are covered. Yes. Ah, when we fall down, yes. he, doesn't, he doesn't leave us down there. When we fall down, thank God there's something on the inside of us. Breathe yes. out the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit say, get up. Yes. Get up. And run to Jesus. Every time we fail him, every time uh, we forget how he hung on Calvary's cross. Every time we forget how they pierced him in his side. Every time we forget how they whipped him all night long. Every time we get so far up ourselves, we don't have time for him. And we go about doing our own thing. We break the law over and over and over again. We run to him and say, Father, forgive me. Yes. And the 
takes all our sins. Throw them into the sea of forgetfulness. Thank you. That's grace, my sisters and brothers. Yes. Even though uh, uh, he's got enough evidence against us to put us not in, only in prison, under the prison, and then left the chair. Amen. And to die. But he so loves us. Yeah. He so loved us. How can he love us like that? I don't understand. The only answer I can come up with is amazing grace. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Amazing grace. And as Sean says, and uh, uh, grace and truth. Grace for grace. Yes, yes. God showed us grace so that he could magnify grace. I, 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 I know I'm, I'm not explaining this quite right, but God, God gave us sunshine mm -hmm. so that uh, 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 he could magnify the sun. He gave us grace that he could uh, make grace what grace is. I deserve favor of God. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I, I found Jesus for myself. I'm so glad I one day discovered that although I was a wretch and undone, that God was offering me grace. And I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary. Sin was weighing me down. The more I read God's law, the more wretched I redeemed, I realized that I was. And like Paul, I said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? Well, guess what? He was already delivering me because he gave me the mind to, to read his word and say, boy, you messing up. Yes, yes. Yeah. Ah, but uh, and though you're messing up, keep reading. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, 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 yes. no. Stop with yes. the law. Keep reading. Yes. Read the whole thing. Yes. But from the beginning of the world, God had already made plans for our salvation. Amen. And we need to tell the story, my sisters yes. and brothers. Amen. We need to tell the story of the wonderful grace of Jesus. Songwriter says, wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sins. How shall my tongues describe it? Where shall its praises begin? He's wonderful. He's counselor. He's a mighty God. Yes. Uh, he's a little in hell and he's a bright in the morning star. All right. He's a bridge over troubled waters. He is a mother to the mother. He's a father to the father. He makes me up when I'm down. He makes me happy when I'm sad. Ah, he, he cheers me up when I'm afraid. Oh, what a wonderful day. What a wonderful grace. What a wonderful Savior. Wonderful grace of Jesus. How kill my tongue describe? Yes. Where am I tell my praise begin? Mm. Taking away my burden and setting my spirit free. Yeah. But the wonderful grace of Jesus yeah. mm. reaches, reaches even me. Yeah. Uh, whosoever will, let him come. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the rolling seas, higher than the mountains, sparkling like a fountain, all sufficient grace uh, for even me. Yes. This is part of the song that I really love. Mm. Broader than the scope of my transgressions. Greater, far greater than all my sin and shame. Yeah. Oh, magnify yeah. the precious yeah. name of Jesus. Praise mm -hmm. Praise his name, grace, God, grace, it was grace, my sisters and brothers, that taught my heart to fear. Then grace, my fear to believe, how precious.
pastors did that grace appear. The how I first believed. Uh, and I just want to let you know, in case I left it out some way along the way and you didn't quite understand, his name is Jesus. Yes. Yes. His name is Jesus, Mary, baby. His name is Jesus. And if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, uh, uh, for God has given him a name. You can't just call on anybody. You got to call on Jesus. He's given him a name. That's above every name. And so what can you say? As long as you believe in any God. No, God said not going to happen. Back the name of Jesus. I'm going to make you all bow. Every knee is going to bow. Every knee in heaven is Every knee on earth and every knee above the earth. The angels are going to bow. Yes, yes, yes. yes. To the glory and the honor of our Lord and Savior. To the glory of God. Yes. You're going to bow and say that he is Lord and he's God all by himself. Yes. Yes. Ain't nobody like Jesus. And don't you let anybody try to change you and tell you anything different. You hold on to Jesus. Regardless of how tough yeah. they make it. Regardless of how many tears you got to cry. Regardless of how many struggles you got to go through. Regardless of how many people talk about you. Regardless of how many friends turn their back. You stick with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the rain is coming. Yes. <laughs> the rain is coming. Yeah. And the door is going to be shut. Yeah. Uh, and there's going to be none but the righteous. Yeah. Uh, uh, the door is going to be shut. And I heard. Oh, Lord. Uh, I, I'm through, y'all. Amen. 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 Call it some amazing race. Maybe there's someone here this morning. A church unsaved. Now's the time. Come. Give your hand to the preacher. And give your heart to the Lord. Jervis White, the 
White family, Doris Jordan and Charles White, Talisha Thomas, the Campbell family, Melanie Webb and family. Says rest in peace. So when it's going on, Dunstan Quickshaw. Have mercy upon the Williams family. The Hunter Matthews, Hunter Matthews and newlyweds, Javon and Daniel Lopez, Birch family, the Carr family, the Ross family, the Gray family, the Mack family, Mother Deer, Sister Henderson, the Henderson family, Pastor Henderson, all that's under the sound of my voice, most holy and all wise God. Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. For your word, thank you for the power of your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light unto our pathways. Light in our paths, all the way from earth to glory. May we ever stay in the path, Lord. May we not stray from the path for there's danger. There's danger in the water, there's danger on either side. The, the, the pathway to heaven is straight and narrow. We have to walk carefully. Our decisions cannot be haphazard. We, have to consciously decide that we don't live for Jesus. Yes. Don't no one join us. Uh, we don't live for Jesus. Yes. Don't peers laugh at me. We don't live for Jesus. Don't family forsake me. We don't live for Jesus. Yes. Maybe in our living for Jesus. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, we can have the testimony like the Hebrew boys who decided they were going to live for Jesus. And because they decided they were going to live for Jesus, that those who laughed at him was now saying, we're going to serve their God. Yeah. There's no God like their God. Uh, when, when, when they went in and they threw him into the fire furnace and and hoping to get them out of their life and get them out of their way instead of them dying. And they, they looked into the fire and said, I see, I see a fourth place and then we just put three in there. And, and so when, we did, when we're in trouble and it seems like we're all alone, our friends will say, I, I see somebody helping them. I see two people. I know it's only one that I hate. Who's that second person? Oh, it is Jesus. They too might yes. say, I believe. Yes, Jesus. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Strengthen yes. us, Lord. Help us to set our light up on a hill. Help us to pass the salt. We are the salt of the earth, you said. May we pass the salt and sprinkle the salt to, yes. as we go from day to day. Hey, may we season this world, Lord. Let them know that Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the light. Forgive us for our shortcomings, Lord. We have a, we don't stand here claiming to be all holy and righteous. We don't stand here uh, claiming to be without shortcomings. Strengthen us, Lord, where we are weak. Build us up, Father God, where we are torn. Bless our families in our house. Save the Lord. Save the Lord. It, it seems like uh, uh, there's nothing we can do to reach you, but uh, we got to remember we were once one of them. You didn't give up on us. Lord, we're not giving up on them. Have mercy, Father God. Bless our prayer list. Bless all that's under the sound of our voice. Bless the absent part of our church. Bless the sinner. Have mercy upon the sinner, man. Take away his heart of stone and give him a heart of flesh that he might come running saying, I yield. What must I do to be saved? And Lord, as I close, may we not grow weary in well-doing. 
May we not ever reach that point that all, oh, all oh, it's just a few of us. What can we do? I tell you what you said we can do. You said if God be for us, He's more than the whole world against us. If God be just for one of us, one of us standing with God on our side, what more could you do? What more could we ask for? God be for us. More than the whole world. More than the whole world. Who can hinder me here? Right on King Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. This is our servant's prayer in Jesus' name. For his sake. grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of God, rest rule, abide with you now and forevermore, let all the saints say,